Making Shot for Turkey Season and Deer Burger Cooking. William Hovey Smith, 2023. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And today we're going to do an unusual activity. We are actually going to make lead shot. Why? Well, reloading components, and particularly lead, is becoming hard to come by these days. So we're going to go back and investigate some methods that may or may not have been used as far back as the 1400s to make such things. Uh, Brad Harris did a recent post and he said he was having great difficulty in buying lead shot to prepare loads for this turkey season. Well, we're going to go back and do it sort of the old-fashioned way. Now, there are more modern methods, but traditionally, the way to make lead shot is that you have a tower. This is multi-stories, three, four stories tall. And up at the very top of the tower, you had a vat of molten lead, and you dropped it through a sieve, and as it fell, it formed spheres, and ultimately hit a water bath below after it was completely cool. Well, the heavier or larger the shot, the taller the tower had to be, so that the lead was sufficiently cool. If hot lead hits water, it will explode. Well, besides being dangerous, uh, that obviously interfered with the sporosity of the shot. So, you had to get your alloy right, you had to get your temperature right, you had to get your hole apertures right, you had to make sure the lid was clean so it would pour through all these little small tiny holes and then it would go fu -fu 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 sploosh and you would separate your shot. Well, I don't have a shot tower three stories tall, nor am I going to build one, nor are we going to use that method. So, if you were out there in the frontier and you didn't have one either, what in the world were you going to do? Well, the first thing you do is, of course, get some lead somehow. Well, lead was a common commodity in trade, but once you got it, uh, you pretty well had to keep up with it. So quite commonly, when they were shooting matches out on the frontier, and this was a popular sport, the second prize would be the lead. That is, the lead bullets that everybody else had shot, and they would dig that out of a tree, or cut the tree down, actually, and the guy would take the tree home with him and chop it up and recover the lead. Well, a few videos back, we did that, sort of. We recovered lead, yes, right here. Gnarly stuff it is. These are bullets of all sorts, some were jacketed, some are not. And we recovered them out of an old tree bowl that we were shooting against. When I said this stuff was gnarly, I meant it. Yeah, uh, that would hardly almost be recognizable as metal if you just happened to ran across it casually. And so we're going to add to that some other miscellaneous materials that I have picked up that you see here. And this is going to be our base that we're going to work with. One expedient way to make lead shot was to take whatever size balls you had Pound them into flat disc like this. And then cut them into smaller pieces.
the purer the lead, the easier it was to work. Or you could go ahead and cast disc like this. So that eliminated the pounding step mostly, but you still had to cut it. And you could send it a little bit further if you desire. We're going to need some heat, so I've got some waste wood from the shop, and uh, we're using our forge here, and I'm going to put some air under it after a bit, but right now there's a fairly good breeze blowing, so hopefully this will take off, although everything is saturated. Uh, we've had several days of rain here in Georgia, so... Uh, Whatever dry wood I've got is coming from inside the house. We're getting wood ignition now. So in time, we'll have a good bed of coals there and be able to melt some lead. In the meantime, we'll get started on actually making our molds. One thing I'm going to do in this approach to making shot is to cast a flat sheet of lead and then cut it. That would be more or less a traditional method. But I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to actually going to make a mold out of wood, uh, which is well seasoned. And we're going to see if we can't cast a rod that's more or less a quarter inch and then cut that rod into shot sized pieces which would be far easier than cutting sheet lead so uh, we'll see what we can do Okay, we'll see which of these pieces is more likely. Because what I want to do is to make a portion into a handle and then have the rest of this as a mold. I've been slabbing off some pieces here to form the rudiments of a handle. And actually my mold will be cut right through here. Back at the ranch, we're getting to a stage where we can actually put a pot on there. That will settle down. It doesn't make any difference if it's absolutely level or not. Give it a little more air through the bottom. And get those pieces fired up. We're not quite to the melting point yet, but we're going to be getting there shortly. And one thing I want to caution 
you always want to start off with your salvage lead first, particularly bullets that have been fired into soil. But you, because you do not know if there might be moisture trapped in some of those clumps of lead. And that can cause a steam explosion, which you don't want. It is absolutely dangerous. So, you can add your lead pigs that have been refined, so to speak, uh, to the pot at any time. Or lead that you know that absolutely is dry. But never, ever, put junk lead in a pot of molten lead. We're starting now. I can see molten material in the bottom of the pot. We'll let you watch that. That's sort of interesting. Now, of course, the copper jacketed material will not melt. If metal can ever be said to stew, I'm letting it stew for a while. That big clump is breaking up. So I'm sure I'm getting all the lead out of it. Okay. Let me get some gloves on and then we can start doing some good. We can start removing all this waste material. There we are. And what we're left with is nice silvery lead. I'm fluxing with a little beeswax. That will help bring up the last of the impurities. Some of which is stuck to the bottom of the pot as you can see. Yeah, this is the dross.
And this is what we're going to be used to actually pour from. I'll let that warm up in the pot for a little while. Now our instrument is starting to look more remotely like a tool and I'm going to put it on the sander here and start working down this handle and then we'll actually cut the groove through here for casting a bead of lead. Well we're getting ready for the next stage got some deer burgers on. I deem those about ready now. And we'll just let those finish off in beer and steam until they're done. And that's the way you can cook deer burgers without having them go all hard on you. Otherwise they will. Well, lunch is ready. Come on, get on there, guy. And there we have it. Your burgers, avocados, little cheese, tomatoes, seeded bread. Yep, that's a good lunch. We're about to make the mold for casting our lead rods. And we've got it clamped here in the vise. And we're going to use this quarter inch angle grinder. And that should burn a hole in it. And so it has. So this is what we're going to attempt to cast lead in. Support this channel by buying my outdoor books, business books, and novels. Available from Amazon.com and booksellers worldwide. The other thing that we're going to cast into is this piece of ceramic. Now I made this years ago from clays off my property. We're going to add these pigs and let them proceed to melt. The first attempts are not going as well as it might be hoped. Uh, this casting in the wood did okay. But 
The pot has a drip as you see. It's not sealing at the bottom. So I need to clean that orifice there. So in the meantime I'm just recovering the lead basically. Cleaning the first pot seems to have cleaned out that vent hole a little bit. So now it should work better. Like with any metal casting, well, it's taken a while to get the touch. Exactly how long to have it under the spout, and how fast to move the mold, and so on. But, uh, yeah, we're actually getting some product. Now that we've run a couple of pots, I've got a better feel for how things are going. So let me see if I can actually show you. Now the trick is to put it down without it spilling, and particularly not spilling on you. We have our aftermath of casting. We have our disc here, which is not quite uniform. But this could be pounded out to a little more flatter shape. Then we have our rods here. And... Our improvised mold actually performed satisfactorily. And it could do this again and again and again. So uh, for whatever reason, if you need to cast soft metals like lead and silver, and you need just one mold one time, yeah, looks like you can get by with wood. I was pleasantly surprised with that. Okay, now for further processing we need to trim these tabs off of course and then cut these rods into more things like the size of number four shot. And we need a knife for that and also for cutting this up. And that knife, uh, well they would use a homemade knife back in the 1700s most likely. And it's be nice to have one with an offset handle and a good thick blade that you can pound on. Well, we got one. There you go. Made out of a lawnmower blade. A uh, good stiff back. And it's offset. So you could put the work here and either come down on it like that if you can want to can cut it, or Actually, take a soft mallet or a piece of wood and pound on it and or cut it like that in the mount of a chef's knife. So we shall see which of these work best.
luminaries, we're going to see how our cutting shot will do. Uh, it is wanting to cut and curl rather than split cleanly. Hmm. Not exactly the desired result. I see I'm having to adjust my techniques here. I'm moving the cutting block a little further back and then making multiple strikes. We have produced some things here that I would not call shot. Uh, they are more rectangular projectiles, I would suppose. Uh, these are really cut this way too large. They need to be halved. Uh, we also have our coin-shaped objects that we pounded out from round balls. So I'm going to cut these two and see how they do. Uh, no better or worse, I suspect, but uh, we'll see how we can try these. These flattened balls are actually doing fairly well. You can cut them up into rectangles like this and then cut them to your size. So, yeah. So if you had 69 caliber balls, or 75 caliber balls, uh, then yeah, you can cut you off a piece like this, and then cut these in the smaller shot. I think these were pure lead, so they are cutting somewhat easier. you're shooting at a turkey, you're typically shooting at the neck and head, so pattern density is significant. So what we're doing is taking these shot blanks, I guess, and actually cutting them in half. So we get an object that's more nearly like a shot or at least as close as a rectilinear object can be. It adds a new dimension to turkey hunting. We can make in your shot one at a time. It's a little more frenetic cutting pieces off this disc as you'll see, but we are getting it done. Like so. Now 
Mwah. In our next videos, I will test shoot the shot, and Bon Richard and I will go turkey hunting. Hunt what you eat, and eat what you hunt. Goodbye, and God bless.